Hi there. Uh, my name is Hertz, and I'm a long-time Zabbix user. And uh, I'll briefly touch on the topic of the Zabbix upgrades. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, I had a chance to work with the wonderful team of Zabbix for quite a long time. Uh, I've written a couple of books on Zabbix that I hope are easy to read. And uh, every now and then I'm writing articles <clears throat> on zabbixbook.com, which is a blog of uh, Zabbix tips, hints, and other hopefully useful information. Uh, I'm also an OpenStreetMap mapper. Uh, this upgrade-related experience is based on uh, Zabbix usage in one division of Nokia, so other divisions might or might not use other products. Uh, and the mandatory disclaimer, usage is not an endorsement. Uh, our environment is uh, split in uh, several major sections. We have development, staging, and then comes the production. Changes are supposed to be implemented in the development environment first, especially bigger changes like a major Zabbix version upgrade. Um, why people would normally upgrade Zabbix and, and maybe a bit more on our reasons to do so. So, of course, the first reason is there are new features and the existing features have been significantly improved. That's a big drive for most of the users, probably. Uh, support is uh, running out sometimes at some point, and that's true for both LTS and non-LTS versions. At some point, you were not getting fixes anymore. Uh, and additionally, uh, some of the security-related functionality in Zabbix might get some improvements in more recent versions that will not be uh, done in the earlier versions because they are too invasive or too complicated. Uh, our upgrade was supposed to be done quite some time ago, completed. Uh, the reality kicks in, and Zabbix, even though it's extremely important, it's a very critical system for us, it's still a support system. It's not the primary production system. And uh, what we have uh, currently, uh, our state is that we have upgraded to Zabbix 3.0, so that's our new version of Zabbix, uh, in uh, our non-development environments, uh, sorry, non-production environments. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, one of our biggest uh, production environments is supposed to move a new, to a new data center, and that involves setting most of the things from the scratch, including Zabbix. So we decided to match the upgrade with this uh, data center move to make things easier for us. Uh, during this time, uh, we noticed that Zabbix team has done a really great job on the features in uh, 3.2 and 3.4, uh, so we decided to bite the bullet and just go for 3.4 as well, even though that's a non-LTS version, which means that the support will end sometime around when 4.0 comes out, so we will have a commitment to upgrade to 4.0 in pretty near future as well. Uh, the upgrade process itself, so what does the upgrade involve, the, the Zabbix upgrade? Uh, the first thing actually is selling the upgrade. That might be selling it to your customer, that might be selling it internally to the management, that might be selling it to yourself. You must uh, be sure that the time that you invest in the upgrade, that it's worth doing it right now. Uh, then of course it's the actual upgrade process, uh, which is a technical thing and usually not the most complicated thing out of these, because uh, after that comes the third stage, which is uh, solving all the problems that come up, that come out after the upgrade. And if you are a good person working on this, then you probably have a list of things that could potentially go wrong, you did the tests and so on, and still some things will escape your attention. Uh, regarding selling the upgrade, that's not really a problem for us because in our division we're lucky to have a really great management. The need to have Zabbix, to upgrade Zabbix is very well understood. Still, we have to allocate time for that. And, uh, well, a carrot has never hurt anybody, and I'm sorry if anybody here has choked on a carrot before, uh, but uh, we uh, added some improvements that were only uh, to be av available after the upgrade. So these are already in our development environment, uh, so uh, we can see how that would work once we have the full upgrade finished. And um, here's the story time. Uh, imagine that there's a, there's a team that's split into two sub-teams, uh, and at any point in time, there's somebody on call. Uh, this on call person is supposed to look at Zabbix alerts, investigate them, hopefully fix them. If they don't acknowledge these Zabbix alerts in five minutes, that is escalated to the other team. And very often that happens during the night time for that other team. And imagine that in the team, there is a member who would like to get less stressful uh, debugging process, so they create a script that uh, is run by cron and acknowledges all the alerts for them. And imagine that at some point he forgets to disable that script in cron, uh, which might lead to some alerts being missed. So uh, what we did to avoid such a situation, uh, we added in the dashboard a link that when clicked automatically acknowledges all the alerts for 15 minutes, giving the time to work on the problem with, with a bit less interruptions. So the person would still get the alerts, but they wouldn't have to worry about acknowledging all of them. 
Uh, another part, uh, we are using Jira for our incident tracking for change requests. And uh, we have uh, links added in the acknowledgement page uh, that will allow to go uh, and search Jira for any problems related to the current uh, system, uh, which would uh, allow to see what currently known problems are there and what recent configuration changes have been made. Uh, and there's also a convenience link to create your issue with already all the information that we usually put in manually pre-filled. So links to latest data, uh, event information, trigger comments, all that is already done for our on-call. And the third one that we have implemented in uh, our development environment uh, is a community add-in called Action Simulator by Fulker. Uh, it's a really great thing. If you haven't tried it, just check it out. Uh, you can read more about it there. I will not go in more detail because uh, it's a great thing, just check it out. Uh, potential concerns compatibility wise. Uh, we don't use Zabbix proxies uh, currently, so that's not an issue for us. Uh, Zabbix Java Gateway protocol has not changed since the gateway was since created, except that it changed in 3.4. Uh, that's not a big concern for us as well, because we plan to upgrade the gateway anyway. There are some uh, new features in 3.4 that are, they, they look very, very nice. Uh, Zabbix agents are fully backward compatible down to 1.0. So that's a really great selling point and stress-free upgrade from, from that point of view. Uh, with Zabbix, the database upgrade potentially could fail, but that's actually not a very common thing. Uh, usually it goes pretty smoothly unless you're maybe one of the first few adapters. Uh, there was a problem where systemd was restarting the Zabbix server during the upgrade process, obviously leaving you with a bit broken database afterwards. Um, how does the Zabbix upgrade happen? A uh, long time ago, we just had a script with SQL statements. Simple, but maybe not very flexible. Uh, now, the Zabbix server, once the new version is first started, that uh, the upgrade is done by the server. If everything is successful, you'll see something like this in your server log file. It, just in case something goes wrong, it's probably a good idea to get at least a bit of familiarity with how the upgrade process happens. So uh, currently, that happens uh, through the Zabbix server code. Uh, again? <laughs> I didn't touch the computer, so it's weird. Okay, I'll try to not move around too much then. So yeah, the Zabbix server code is the one doing the upgrade, and uh, well, you don't have to get familiar with everything in there. Uh, just taking a quick look before the upgrade, maybe can save you a few minutes afterwards. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. I'm not touching things anymore as much as possible. Okay, so uh, during the upgrade, the system requirements might change as well. In some cases, they will change significantly enough to require the operating system upgrade. And in some cases, that will mean that you will have to do a full reinstall. Like for us, that was Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 uh, to 7. There is no really supported upgrade path. And uh, trying to find positive and everything, uh, we can uh, work on all the historical baggage and clean things up. Uh, all the undocumented cron jobs, all the changes that are not properly version controlled, uh, various modules used by the said scripts, uh, SNMP MIB files that some people have placed somewhere, all that uh, can be documented, cleaned up, and possibly even packaged. Uh, other things that can bite you afterwards, uh, the notification uh, the, we use a lot of URLs in our notifications, and uh, after the upgrade, these change. Uh, if you test everything, you will notice that before the upgrade, uh, if you have lots of actions and if you have tried to change something in all of them, you will know that you have to change that in the actions, in many operations. Uh, that's a lot of clicking around, lots of add, update, edit, save uh, links and buttons, and lots of room for error. So uh, a few database queries actually will make that, in most cases, if you're careful, uh, much faster. Uh, getting away with not upgrading things. We do some things around Zabbix that allow us to run it maybe longer than it's supported officially. Uh, just a few highlights. Uh, we had alerts delayed from our Zabbix 2.2 system. It was not easy to debug because this, does, uh, this version doesn't have runtime log level changing. We couldn't change that only for the alerter process. Uh, 3.4 might help with the parallel al alerting, but well, that's, uh, that's quite some time in the future for us. Um, so we, uh, one of the things we added was mail round trip or end-to-end -end monitoring. Uh, we were sending an email uh, with a timestamp in the body to a public mailbox. We retrieved that with git mail and we parse and compare the timestamp to the uh, lines in the header, to individual hops in the header. And that will allow us to identify which uh, hops in the email delivery chain are responsible for the delay and how large that is at any given time. 
Another thing is finding out how many alerts you are actually sending out uh, and, and uh, see how that has changed over time. Um, there's uh, luckily API, so we can query the API and uh, send data, in our case, in every 10 minute steps to, uh, to Zabbix. Uh, low level discovery, we discover all the media types, we discover all the message statuses. Uh, that creates automatically items. Uh, so we are using for, for maybe less common things, we're using pushover and prowl. Uh, we don't use PagerDuty because um, we found that if you want to only use notifications, PagerDuty tries to take over everything. It's a great for vendor locking, but maybe not that great for users. So it will take over your escalations, issue tracking, chat, email, family. It's like system D of notifications. So uh, this is a, an example of uh, how many alerts every 10 minute window we are sending out from our staging system. Quite noisy, lots of systems in there, lots of development work going on. Um, so we at least can see how that has changed over time and maybe identify some change that made it more noisy. Uh, what if Zabbix has generated lots of alerts and is not even unable to send them? We had cases where there were thousands of alerts queued for sending, they were in the pending state. Uh, you can find out the count by looking for status of zero and alert type of zero, which is messages, and then just changing them all to fail in the database. I don't know whether that will work in 3.4, but this is very helpful if things go really south. Uh, how do we know what's what? Uh, these are the standard values. Something has changed in 3.4. Uh, and a little bit of uh, security sprinkle. Uh, we do some kind of shell around Zabbix uh, to uh, make the older versions slightly more secure. And one quick example is uh, identifying all users that are never logged in or who have logged in a long time ago. Uh, there is no, as far as I know, there is no session information available in the API, so we had to go directly to the database. Uh, in the sessions table status field, uh, zero means active, one is inactive. Uh, you also have to keep in mind that housekeeper table holds, uh, sorry, config table uh, holds uh, information for the housekeeper configuration. Uh, so. If user has no sessions, that means that either they never logged in or housekeeper removed those. So you have to account for that. And uh, a quick example of this script in action is, um, so we are running the script. Uh, it goes to the Zabbix database. It finds out who logged in uh, either a long time ago or never logged in as far as we know. And then those users can be automatically locked. Uh, a few lessons that are not new but maybe more reinforced. Uh, you can even think of the upgrade as uh, as uh, you're on a, on a piece of ice, you're floating away from, slowly it's floating away from the, from the land. And uh, the longer you wait, the bigger the gap. The same thing with the upgrades. The longer you put them away, the more work you have to do for each upgrade, which is the, the situation that we uh, find ourselves in any now and then. Uh, additionally, uh, it's a good idea to make always the new version easiest. People are uh, lazy, they will always gravitate towards whatever, whatever is easier. And uh, we had a wrapper set for the Zabbix sender that was sending to our old and new Zabbix instances at the same time, which was great because the temporary solution was very easy, but uh, it caused some problems later when the old servers were removed. So I would you probably go with making all the uh, temporary solutions, all the old solutions, very hard to use. And uh, I'm a bit biased here, but uh, consider the Zabbix professional services to help with the upgrade. Um, I just like them. Right, that was actually it. And uh, yeah, please uh, join us on IRC. It's one of the, if not the most popular IRC channel on monitoring, that's where the community is. Uh, on zabbixbook.com, there's a form if you are not an IRC person, you can even send questions in there. And um, ask me questions here as well. Do we have some questions on Slido? Uh, yes, we have one question, thank you. Uh, another very common reason why people not upgrade is the requirement of newer, newer PHP version. Do you have any suggestion on this? By the bullet, upgrade your distribution, that's what we are doing. Actually, PHP requirement is one of the major things why we decided to go for a full reinstall for L7. Uh, we could have, of course, uh, compiled something ourselves, used some packages, but that's just a maintenance hell that we don't want to get in. Unfortunately, I don't have any other suggestions as hack it or upgrade it. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the audience? No question. Thank you very much, Rehearse.
can you, can you get, can I get back the, the video for, for three seconds, five seconds? Back, can I get back the video? I'll just drop something here. Like from the community standpoint, there's this URL. <laughs> Let me know what you think. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.